Hey guys, and welcome back to a brand new video. Today, I'm gonna be covering the top four Premiere Pro color grading mistakes that I see beginners make all the time. Now, don't get me wrong, Premiere Pro is hard to color grade in, believe me. But with that being said, these are some simple mistakes that you can just, I guess, make without even noticing, which is far from ideal. So by all means, we're gonna be diving into Premiere Pro. I'm gonna be showing you how to not make these mistakes and hopefully stand out a little bit less like a beginner and how to stand out a little bit more like you know what you're doing. If by the way, you need a little bit more guidance in the form of color grading skills and tutorials, I've got a whole load of those already uploaded on my channel. So by all means, go and do yourself a favor, go and check some of those out. You'll see my full color grading workflow. You'll understand how I go from A to B. And uh, yeah, without further ado, let's dive into today's video and let's get things started. Okay, so mistake number one, and to be honest with you, arguably the biggest mistake I see beginners make all the time is pushing or pulling their highlights or shadows way too far. And I'm gonna show you exactly how you can understand and know when you're pushing or pulling them too far inside of Premiere Pro. So first things first, you wanna open up the color effects tab. Now, what this is gonna do is this is gonna open up the Lumetri, I guess, color panel where you color grade, where you do all things. And while you're in here, you may or may not already have this over here, Lumetri scopes activated. If not, all you have to do is come over to window and then come down to Lumetri scopes. Make sure you have that ticked and then you'll be seeing something like this. Now, what you can do here is if we dive into basic color correction, if we just drop the shadows, you can see this thing moves. If we increase the highlights, you can see it moves again, and you can see things go crazy when I pull the exposure all the way up. So what on earth is the Lumetri Scopes? Well, this is an accurate readout of exactly what is going on in your video. So for example, if we have a look at this clip here, we can see that we have quite a lot of dark area down here, which is represented right here. And then you can see things get brighter as we move up. So as you can see, that's this. And then that little sun just in here is exactly this little blip here. So anything touching zero is, is clipped. There's no detail, there's no data at all, it's just pure black. And anything touching 100 is pure white, there's no detail, it's pure clipped, it's pure white. So this is not ideal for either extreme. You want to be sitting always somewhere in the middle. So for example, if I wanted to color grade and I wanted to correct this clip, what I would look at doing is I would drop the shadows, but I wouldn't drop them too far. I don't usually like going below that five kind of range. So anything in here is pretty much the sweet spot. And then I would also look at really increasing the highlights. Now what this is gonna do is this is gonna add a contrast. The more this graph is spread out, the more contrast that's in your shot. And we can see that by simply just increasing the contrast slider here, things get more spread out as we add more contrast. Now, of course, I was shooting this in log, so things are naturally kind of squished together. Uh, but if we were to correct this to something very similar to what we're seeing on screen now, this is what usually would be coming out of camera when you first import it into Premiere. Now, the thing is, and something that you've got to keep in mind here is that, of course, this is going to depend on how you, I guess, expose your shot while you're shooting. So keep in mind that you really don't want to be pushing or pulling things too far when you're shooting either, just like you don't want to be pushing or pulling things too far while you're color grading. And with that being said, another reason why I think Lumetri Scopes is so important in everyone's color grading workflow is because your monitor and your screen on what you're color grading on may not be calibrated properly or may just be kind of dark. So this is ideal. What you can do here is you can clearly see if it's too bright or too dark regardless of your screen. Now with that being said, I'm also gonna dive into beginner mistake number two here, and that is editing with a poorly calibrated monitor. This is something that I see beginners get bitten with all the time. Do you ever color grade a video on Premiere Pro, export it, looks great on your computer, and then you send it over to your phone, and then when you get it on your phone, you're ready to upload it to Instagram, you're ready to put it on YouTube, or whatever the case, you just wanna show other people it looks completely different. Well, that is purely for the fact that your screen is not calibrated properly. And not all screens can be calibrated 100% accurately. Now, this is kind of hard. And to be honest, it's less of a mistake and more of a lack in gear, which kind of sucks, uh, which means the only way you can, I guess, improve this is to spend a little bit of money. Uh, but for example, if you're editing on, let's say a new Mac, like this one here, this is an M1 Pro MacBook. It's got the Pro Display XDR built into it. So I know this screen is 100% calibrated properly. The colors, the contrast, everything is perfect. But let's say I was editing on a 2010 MacBook Air. Well, chances are I'm not getting the same quality that I'd be seeing on my phone once I export it, which is another reason why you need Lumetri Scopes but you also really need to think about what screen you're color grading on because this is gonna have a huge impact on your shots. Once again, this is less of a mistake and more of a fault in gear, which kind of sucks, but it is what it is. And it's something that I see beginners get bit with all the time. So just keep this in mind when you're color grading. Now, before we move on to mistake number three, I'm just gonna come back into Premiere Pro here and I'm gonna come over to this clip here. Now, maybe thinking to yourself, Zach, this is the exact same shot. Why are you showing me this? Well, I'm just gonna turn on the Lumetri color 
and boom, just like that, it's color graded. This was color graded with my cinematic LUTs. And to be honest with you, you guys can go and get these exact colors that I use on all of my footage down below in the link in the description. You can use this code at checkout for a cheeky little discount. And if you guys wanna save a stack of time and get the same beautiful colors that I do in my clips, well, by all means, go and do so. You can pick them up, they're on sale, go and check them out. But with that said, let's dive back into the video. Okay, so mistake number three that I see beginners make all the time is not having enough rest. Now, I don't mean getting eight hours of sleep a night or, you know, having a nice 30 minute to one hour break to have lunch or whatever the case. I don't mean rest like that. I mean resting your eyes. We all know once you've worked on a project for a long time, you could be looking at something and then all of a sudden it just doesn't look right. It looked well and good five minutes ago and now it doesn't look right again. And now you're changing things and you're going deeper and this, that and the other. This is a very, very common thing that happens to pretty much everyone that makes and color grades videos. You need to reset your eyes. You need to take a little break, go look outside, go look at something in the distance, go look at, at a different color, go look at different lighting, whatever the case, go and change what you're actually looking at and then come back and have a look at your video. And to be honest, you've probably already nailed the color grade. This is very, very important because we can really kind of overthink and start to overanalyze every little thing in our clip. And by all means, that's somewhat a good thing, but it's also gonna be a detriment. The last thing you wanna be doing is really finicky, nitpicking absolutely everything in your video. And then all of a sudden you have all these weird kind of artifacts because you've masked in this, you've masked out that, you've done this, you've done that, you've changed this too much, you've pulled this slider too much, you've pushed this one too much. It can be horrible. Something you really should do all the time is simply just take breaks. Five, 10, 15 minutes, whatever the case, is a really good idea. And to back this one up, it's also a really good idea if it is available to you to ask someone for their opinion. Does this look good? Does this look bad? Maybe they have absolutely no idea about color grading and all they can say is, yeah, that shot looks good. Well, nah, there's, something's off there. It's really good to get someone else's opinion as well because like I said, to be honest with you, you can almost start to go crazy when you're color grading for a really long period of time. Okay, and last but not least, mistake number four that I see a lot of beginners make is masking in way too much fake light and fake light where it doesn't make sense. So what do I mean? Well, let's use the color graded clip already. And as you can see, we've got the sun smack bang in the middle of this clip. Now I love this clip as I come into frame just up here. I think this is an awesome shot. This was shot in a little town called Bodrum or Bodrum in Turkey, kind of dope. But anyway, this shot here just has the sun in the middle and it's nearly down. The sun has nearly set. And what a lot of people do, what a lot of people like to do is add fake light into their shot. Now this may not be the best example, but I'm gonna show you what I mean anyway. Let's head up to the Lumetri color tab and let's add a new, a new Lumetri color effect. Let's head over to the effect controls, close these effect here, these effects here, and then let's add a mask. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna add a mask in the top corner. I'm gonna feather it like crazy. And sometimes if the sun is coming in from the left or the right, you can add light coming into your shot. Now, for example, it could be something like this. Now I see a whole lot of people go over the top on this all the time and it looks horrible. Let's just say in a perfect world, the sun is not in the center here, but it's over here. And I've just added all this light. Maybe I pump up the, uh, pump up the temperature. I pump up the tint, say, yep, that'll do. And boom, I've got myself some banging fake light. Now this works really well inside of Lightroom. And if you do it tastefully inside of Premiere Pro, it can work really well as well. But please don't be that person that's just adding in the wrong fake light and way too much of it all the time. The easiest way to find out if you're adding too much fake light is simply by two things. One, where is the light source coming from? Please match that. Usually you only wanna emphasize where the light source is coming from and that's the best way to add fake light. And two, the absolute most dead giveaway is your shadows the wrong way. Let's say you had shadows coming in from this direction instead of coming straight onto us and you add fake light over here pointing this direction it just doesn't add up, it doesn't make any sense. So do yourself a favor, don't go overboard on the masks and just relax on adding fake light. Believe me, it's not a good look. All right guys, and that is gonna wrap up today's video. I hope I've been able to dive into Premiere Pro and just give you a few little pointers and tips that I see beginners make all the time to hopefully help you not make them because to be honest with you, it's gonna make you stand out like a very bad color grader and that's the last thing you want. But guys, if you've learned anything in today's video, let me know what it was down in the comments below. If you're new around here, a subscribe would mean the absolute world. And as always, guys, 